We start tonight with a story about messaging versus facts. Recently, the Oregon Department of Transportation beginning, began letting all of us know they just don't have enough money to plow and sand our roads like they used to. And if you live in the metro, you've seen the lack of graffiti cleanup around town. Odaz says there's a good reason for their scale back, but I found otherwise, and it's definitely our big story. ODOT blames falling money from the fuels tax, that's gas and diesel, and also inflation. Now, the fuel tax issue makes sense in the big picture. More and more people are driving hybrids and electric vehicles. You might even have one. Interestingly, ODOT's economists report that fewer vehicles are owned now in Oregon than before COVID. Thought that was kind of cool to find out. So there's fewer vehicles to be filled with gas or diesel and fewer paying the state tax. The problem? Well, their story about falling fuel tax revenue is not exactly, okay, not at all, factually accurate. How do I know? I looked at the numbers, and I'll show them to you. And by the way, we here at The Story, we do not like to take things at face value, and I don't think that you do either. You want to dig in and find out what the numbers really show? Me too. Let's do that. First, let's get to the talking point from ODOT. I wanted to interview the director, but I was told, nope, he's not available for you. Here's Catherine Beninati at an ODOT news event on driving in the snow. Like many transportation agencies around the country, we are seeing revenues go down as, as cars get more fuel efficient and a large portion of our budget is the gas tax. And inflation is really eating up more of our buying power. So materials, labor, supplies, they're all costing more. Um, and that is, that is giving us some challenges when it comes to our budget. And you will see us out there uh, less this winter um, and doing less maintenance around the state in general. And it's not just Catherine saying that. ODOT has spread that message far and wide. Funding from fuel tax is declining. As a result of that falling revenue, ODOT says impacts will be felt around the state, as you just heard. For example, it's not going to be able to do as much roadside maintenance, which includes cleaning up graffiti in the Portland area, for example. Here is their announcement on that one. They say they've had to cut graffiti removal budget significantly. They're also cutting back on things like mowing the grass and litter pickup. But this one should really strike fear into your heart. ODOT is also cutting the amount of sand and de-icer. It's going to apply to highways in the Portland area. They'll have fewer seasonal employees, but they'll still prioritize I-5, I-205, I-84, I-405, and Oregon 217. But they're warning Portland area travelers to prepare for the possibility of extended delays and varying degrees of traction, along with extended closures and chain restrictions for areas outside the metro area. So, wow, okay, that does sound sort of dire. But do the facts back all that up? Not in the way in which they're pitching that story. Let's take a look. I dug into the October 2023 revenue forecast from ODOT, sort of bland on the cover page there, fellas. I guess, you know, kudos for not wasting money on a fancy design. It includes this bar chart, though, which shows that the total amount of money coming into ODOT in 2023 that looks pretty close to what was coming in in 2022. If you want to see the gas and diesel tax money, look at the green. That also looks pretty close to me. And when we look at the actual total numbers, the money that came in from the fuels tax, which again is combined gas and diesel, you can see that fiscal year 2023 was $669 million. That, my friends, is $17 million more than the year before. So more is not less, up is not down. Now in fairness, the report also contains this chart, which I also found interesting. It shows the differences in the sales of diesel, there in the orange, and gas, there in the blue, compared to the same month in 2019. Diesel, mostly up, gas, mostly down compared to 2019. A lot of that happened during COVID as we all stayed home and diesel trucks got going, delivering lots of things to our homes. And on the far right, you can see the spring of 2023 gas sales. Most of those months were still down compared to 2019. But the fuels tax is a combination of the two, gas and diesel, and together those were up. So I don't know how ODOT thinks it can say that funding from fuel taxes declined and forced them to cut services. Their own reports show that is not the case. It did not go down. It went up by $17 million. Now, Will it go down in the future? 
Probably. I have no doubt about that actually over the long term, but it's not happening right now and it's probably not going to happen next year either, in part because of a new two cent per gallon tax that will likely kick in this coming January. Something to look forward to there. Here's a response I got from an ODOT spokesman when I asked about this. I think part of the issue may be that we think in terms of budget cycles and we try to manage a fairly long timeline. <laughs> now, anytime I get a response like that, I know there's going to be some tap dancing going on. So he continues. It's true that revenue from the fuels tax is still growing for the very near future as the gas tax increases by two cents in 2024. But in, he also stressed flattening revenue from the fuels tax is the primary reason we are reducing service levels. Now, I do believe that their expenses are going up, but if that's the case, they should just say that and not try to blame those fuel taxes at the same time. It's important to get the message straight or you're going to lose credibility with the public. OK, so now that we've got that out of the way, here's a question. If the agency knew its finances were getting shaky for operations and maintenance, why not plan for that? Why not set aside money for those things that affect most of us, snowplow and graffiti removal? As I mentioned, ODOT would not make their director available for me, so I went to someone else who knows their budget as well as anyone, State Senator Elizabeth Steiner, the co-chair of the powerful Ways and Means Committee at the legislature, which hands out state money. And I asked her why ODOT does not plan ahead and budget for things like graffiti and snowplows. Well, they do budget for it, but it depends entirely on gas tax revenues because snow plowing and all other road maintenance comes from the Highway Trust Fund. The Highway Trust Fund is paid for with our gas taxes. If gas tax revenue goes down, Highway Trust Fund revenues go down, and that makes it hard to pay for things like snow plowing. But they, can't they build in sort of a backup emergency fund anticipating that because they know it's kind of rocky right now and it's going to be going down more? In theory, yes, they could. We have not done that um, before. And I don't think anybody anticipated that it was going to go down quite as much as it did. So um, it's certainly possible and we're certainly going to re need to rethink how we pay for road maintenance in this state because gas tax revenues will only continue to decline as fuel efficiency goes up, more people switch to hybrid or electric vehicles, and even on standard gasoline powered vehicles, fuel efficiency is going up. So we need to switch to an alternate method of funding for this. And what do you think that would be? Is that an over the road mileage tax? That's probably the most rational because you know it's how many miles people drive that puts damage to our roads. So it makes sense for us to do that. Um, there have been some concerns in the past about privacy or whatever, but I think there are a lot of strategies around that um, and ways to deal with it. So, um, and frankly, unless you never allow your phone to have location services turned on, um, your data, your location's being collected by private companies all the time. All right, thank you, Senator. Now, I talked with the Senator before I dug into those ODOT revenue report numbers, but nonetheless, in my opinion, the big points are these. First, money for the fuels tax did not go down. It went up slightly. So let's sync the messaging and reflect the facts. Second, ODOT should have either put money aside for high impact activities like plowing, sanding, and graffiti removal, or maybe they should go to the emergency board with the state legislature and ask for money now before the next legislative session. That board, by the way, is meeting in two days down in Salem. They shell out money for emergency needs before the next legislature meets all the time. Maybe, ODOT, you can get them to give you the money you need. Third, it is becoming more clear that paying a state tax at the gas pump is not going to work in the future when it comes to funding ODOT. I know you're going to hate that, but I think something like a tax that you pay based on the number of miles that you drive, regardless of how efficient your vehicle is, that probably is the way to go. So what about you? What do you think? You know what to do. We love hearing from you. We love including you in our show, in our stories. So share your input. What do you think? Over the road tax tolls? I know you hate that one, too. Uh, the email is the story at kgw.com or call and leave a voicemail 503-226-5090. I look forward to hearing from you.